Today, I dig into the mailbag and answer your questions. Keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to educate and inform the amateur radio community. So if this is your first time watching, please consider subscribing to the channel. Well, I got a lot to cover on this episode, so we're going to dig right in. Uh, first off, uh, I've had quite a few questions concerning my recent review of the Redivis RT95 dual band mobile uh, transceiver. It can be tough to tailor a review towards the um, wants and, and desires of everybody that are watching, so I had a lot of follow-up questions that we're going to go right into and, and answer. Uh, first off, hello Michael, can you please tell me the difference uh, between this radio and the Anytone AT778UV? They both look this, like the same radio, um, just different brands. Thank you. Well, from what I can tell in my research, uh, the Redivis RT95 and the Anytone AT778UV are the same radio. Uh, there might be slight changes in the firmware uh, between the two radios, but um, they seem to be functionally equivalent. Many Chinese radios do look the same on the outward appearance, and they also operate in a similar manner between different brands, but they can have slightly different firmwares on the inside. So um, don't always assume that if a radio looks the same on the, out, on the outside, it's the same under the hood. Another question. Hi, and thanks for the video. Is there a quick and easy way to be able to listen to the input of a repeater? Uh, the reverse function is buried down in uh, the menu, so in itself is not a real accessible function. Uh, but uh, you can program one of the buttons uh, to reverse the frequency or to listen to the input of the repeater pair. Maybe P3, which is the monitor button uh, by default, could be used as the reverse um, button and they assign, assign to that task. The six, program the six programmable buttons on the front face are all user customizable. So feel free to set them up for whatever need or purpose that you want. All right, another question. Uh, can you transmit DTMF for repeater control? I read something that said you couldn't, but I can't find a definitive answer. Well, I've seen mention of the same, and um, so I had to try it out. It works. I was able to transmit DTMF tones uh, with the radio connecting and disconnecting to a local IRFP link. So to transmit DTMF, what you're going to want to do is um, hold down the push to talk button and then press the, num the keys on the keypad, the numbers on the keypad, to generate the DTMF tones. Uh, you'll hear those tones as you punch in those numbers. Finally, this question on the RT95. It appears that memory names or the alpha tags can only be five characters long. Is there any way to make them six? Well, not that I am aware of. In doing so would probably involve a firmware update, and I would question if the radio has enough available memory in order to uh, create that extra space in the, in the alpha tags. I find that kind of weird, though, because the uh, RT95 you know, has, that, has five characters for the tag, but a US call sign is, can have up to six characters. A two by three call sign is up to six uh, characters. So. Um, also, I'm also going to note that I was having a lot of trouble putting these alpha tags into the radio. I'd, put, I'd type them into the programming software, but when I uploaded that program to the radio, it wouldn't take. So I'm just using a paper cheat sheet instead. Well, if you have any other questions on the Redivis RT95 dual band mobile transceiver, uh, please feel free to add them and I'll, I'll answer those questions as I can. So moving on, uh, I've got another question. Sir, I'm looking at a Baofeng walkie-talkie ham radio. I read it as like a mini scanner for police, EMS frequencies, and, but I looked at the questions uh, for the technician license and why do I have to know certain things if I'm just having a walkie-talkie and not a huge home base radio system? I, have, I do have a learning disability. I had slight problems in high school, not saying that I'm stupid. Well, you ask an excellent question on why certain information is necessary for the amateur radio license. The amateur radio license exam covers four main topics, uh, rules and regulations, operating procedures, basic electronics, and simple amateur radio theory. Could this be overkill if you're just planning to use a um, handheld or a little portable radio on the repeater? Oh, possibly, but um, they are all important concepts and um, a foundation for your enjoyment in the amateur radio hobby. So it's all good stuff to know. But I do empathize uh, with your troubles in studying for the exam. 
everyone has a different learning style and not all methods are the same. I don't recommend trying to study uh, for the test by looking at the questions and, and answers. Uh, that's an inefficient method and uh, learning of learning and will not really impart any knowledge in the process. Fortunately, there are many uh, study aids available from books um, from by both the ARRL and uh, Gordon West. Uh, the free video series by David Kassler. I'll put a little link up on this on the video here. You can check those out. And also online classes and resources like hamstudy.org. Many local clubs also offer um, exam study sessions and uh, mentoring groups, so you might want to check those out too. I hope you can find a method that works for your particular uh, learning method. Next up, dumb question, but is there a certain height I can put my two meter antenna? Well actually, this is a great question, and in a nutshell, two meter VHF propagation is primarily line of sight. So other factors that might you know, affect your effective coverage or rain, in, along with antenna height, are gonna be uh, terrain and also um, transmitter power. Usually higher is better with antennas, uh, but you're gonna be, but as you go higher, you're gonna be also receiving diminishing returns uh, as you get past a certain height. For example, uh, most two meter antennas seem to work best in that 30 to 50 foot range. Um, to get a big improvement past that level, you're gonna have to double the antenna height, like 60 or 120 feet or more. Uh, once you get above 30 to 50 feet, just adding another 10 feet isn't going to give you any noticeable improvements. Uh, but if you had your antenna pretty low, say at 10 or 15 feet, then maybe doubling it to 20 or 30 feet, you know, you're going to see a lot bigger improvement. Finally, um, this question. What is a good price for a used ICOM IC718? Well, I've seen the IC718, which is an entry-level HF transceiver, uh, go for about $400 to $450 at local ham fests. Yeah, I really wouldn't pay more than $400 for this radio, um, especially if it doesn't have the, the DSP board installed in it. Currently on eBay, I've seen them selling between $350 and $450. Uh, this model really seems to hold its value quite well. I purchased my new way back in 2002, and I don't think I paid more than $450 or $500 for it at the time. So, depending on condition, I think $400 is a good price for this particular transceiver. Well, that's it for this time. Um, I hope I've got more videos in the works, including one, you know, we're going to talk about some uh, two meter antenna uh, propagation and distance. It seems like that's a common question people have. And also, I'm going to be uh, doing a review of a new uh, Redivis uh, DMR dual band handheld radio, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that one. For more ham radio articles, please check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Lots of information there. And also, if you like this video, as always, give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hitting subscribe notifies you when new videos are, are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And 73.